Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. Senator, thank you for being here. Your reaction to Krugman and the above. Well, first of all, this is what these guys always do. They try to pick out a group of the country, in this case, rural Americans, and try to turn that group against everybody else. Uh, the facts of Krugman's column are completely ridiculous. He actually is not basing his argument on anything real. He says that rural Americans collect more money than urban Americans. Uh, that's not right. Uh, he completely ignores the fact that Social Security and Medicare are programs that people have paid into. They're not welfare-style entitlement programs. The other problem with, with what Paul Krugman says is that, that we have a rural rage problem. Well, I don't know if he's ever been to a rural area, but most of the people that I know in rural areas are actually pretty happy. They live pretty good lives. Uh, the crime rate in our rural areas is much lower than our urban areas. So there's just this ridiculous fiction that Paul Krugman tells himself to feel better about a group of Americans to justify the politics that he wants to impose on them. When, what he might try doing is actually going to these areas, listening, and he would find that rural areas are not full of rage. They're full of very good people who just want to live in a better country. You know, J.D., it's a good point because uh, you look at the cities across America, you have, you know, rioters and looters. You can't walk down the street and feel safe. I would much rather walk down the street of, you know, any main street of rural America where I would feel safe. If I was going to get a flat tire, J.D., I'd rather get a flat tire in Wausau, Wisconsin than New York City because someone might stop and, and help me out. I think this is really about, you know, rural Americans care about their family, their faith, their firearms their patriotism. That's a difference, but it's not rage. No, that's exactly right. I mean, look, there's a difference of values between Paul Krugman and most of the people that I grew up around, and I wouldn't have it any other way. The problem then is Paul Krugman then tends, tries to justify his entire political worldview by putting down the people that I grew up around, the people who made this country great in the first place. Now, let's just step back for a second. Paul Krugman is one of the most influential economists in the entire country. He has pursued policies and encouraged policies that have led to the devastation of a lot of the rural economy, the decline of the industrial economy, the manufacturing economy that so many good middle class people depend on. He has also also proposed open border policies that have flooded a lot of rural areas with drugs, with illegal crime, with fentanyl. So he looks at this and instead of saying, you know, maybe I should pursue different policies, maybe people want to live the life that they want to live, not the life that I'd like to live for them. He decides that these people, their values and the false rage that he imposes upon them is somehow the issue. This is a big problem with modern left wing politics. Instead of listening to people and understanding why people disagree with them. They create a caricature of somebody, they attack that caricature, and they never reflect on their own politics or why those politics have been a failure. And it's been ongoing for years, Senator. That's why we wanted to, to go back a bit and, and play those what we know are unforgettable little bits of denigration and um, condescension from a, one, a former president, and uh, one, a wannabe president, a never was and never will be president, Hillary Clinton. But one thing in that Krugman article that jumped out at me, if people are upset in rural communities, no mention of the opioid epidemic. Yeah, no mention of the opioid epidemic, no mention of the fact that we have lost millions of good manufacturing jobs, a lot of them in rural areas to China, and no mention of the fact that Paul Krugman has been a big driver of these policies for the past two decades. You know, another thing that's crazy about this is if you go to the heartland, if you go to rural Ohio and ask people what they think of Paul Krugman, they would have never heard about him and they wouldn't care about him. It's Paul Krugman that's so obsessed with rural America, and that probably tells you all you need to know. But they would invite you into their house, even if you were a stranger, and serve you up a piece of pie out of the refrigerator and make you a cup of coffee. That's where you know, we it, all grew up. That's, that's true. And, Senator, you can maybe judge a man exactly by, right. by his enemies. So you were actually mentioned in this article by Paul Krugman uh, in reference to, he said, there is, however, this unwritten rule in American politics that it's okay for politicians to seek rural voters by insulting big cities and their residents. But it would be unforgivable for urban politicians to return the favor. He was referring to a tweet that you had made about going to New York City. What's your take on that? 
Well, first of all, it's ridiculous. I didn't insult anybody who lives in New York. I insulted the big crime policies yeah. of New York City that's, that's caused an increase in violent crime, in murders, in assaults, and, and a lot of other problems as well. But the flip side is that these guys always do the very thing. They accuse you of doing the thing that they do themselves. Our entire political class has been obsessed with what's wrong with rural America for 20 or 30 years. Think of the book, What's the Matter with Kansas? Think about this very column that Paul Crookman wrote. So this is a problem. They constantly project and attack on rural America, and then they say that nobody's allowed to attack rural America. Well, that's what they've been doing. The problem is not that the, the, the you can't attack rural America. Our politicians have been doing that nonstop. The problem is we've got a lot of policies that have made rural America worse off. People are right to be frustrated by that, but they still love their country. And like you guys said, they're the nicest people in the world. I wish Paul Krugman would get to know them a little bit instead of insulting them. Uh, looking ahead to 2024, Senator, who are you backing? Well, I'm going to say more about that in the next couple of days, but let me just say I think Donald Trump did a very good job as President of the United States, and I suspect he'll do a very good job if we give him another chance. You know, J.D., um, I didn't think you were going to answer that question, by the way. Nice, nice uh, hold off there. Well done. You're, you're, you're settling into D to D.C. really well here. Uh, but, I think you know, you come from coal country, I, I think, but whether you come from coal country or you come from oil country, I came from logging country. When you shut down our jobs, people do get a little upset about that. They do get a little angry, and, and, and rightfully so. Um, just like if you, you shut down Wall Street, you know, a few blocks away from us here, people might get angry at that. Um, but that doesn't mean they're bad people. Um, listen, I got to tell you what, Senator, you have been uh, a voice of common sense. I couldn't have been more excited for your victory. Congratulations. Uh, and uh, fight like heck in the Senate. We appreciate you. Thank you both. Take care. Senator, thank you so much.